Hello gorgeous peeps, this is Chris from Techspert and I'm here with a fresh new Motorola One, an Android One handset launching here in the UK next week for £269. I'm going to do a quick side by side with the Honor Play which is already launched. It's 279 quid, only slightly more expensive, it packs some really neat gaming features whereas the Motorola One is a nice clean vanilla Android experience. So which one is best for you in terms of the specs, camera tech, performance, all that kind of shenanigans? Well, let's do a side by side. And don't forget for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech to give that subscription button a bloody good poke. Cheers. So first up, the design. If we stick the Motorola One side by side with the Honor Play, you can see that the Motorola One is definitely the more compact of the pair. It's not a dinky phone by any means, it's still a 5.9 incher, but it is a little bit easier to, to grip and to handle with the one mitt. As you can see, you can drag down the notifications bar from anywhere on the screen as well, which helps out with that general one-handed use. That said, over here on the Honor Play, you do get a good bit of one-handed help as well. All you need to do is swipe your finger across that navigation bar down at the bottom, and as you can see, it minimizes everything on your desktop. So again, you can all oh, just about stretch up for that notifications bar, and all of your apps will work in this one-handed mode as well. Now both phones rock quite a snazzy look from the front as well. As you can see there, quite skinny bezels surrounding the display, just uh, slightly chunkier down beneath uh, with a nice bit of branding in each case as well, Honor and Motorola. Some people don't like that, I'm not particularly bothered to be honest. And of course your typical bit of screen notch action up top just to keep the bezels skinny up there as well. Good heft to either phone as well. The Motorola one is slightly lighter at 162 grams compared with 176 gram on a player, but there's really not much in it. Now, if we flip around to the back, you'll notice they sport very different designs around on that rear end. However, as you see, the Honor Play sports a matte metal design, whereas in the case of the Motorola One, it's a full glass panel. This is actually the player edition of the Honor Play. As you can see there, it's got a nice bit of highlighted around the uh, rear-mounted fingerprint sensor, around the camera grill, and around that power and volume buttons too. Plus this weird sort of microchip design as well, which is uh, interesting, unique, I guess. Here on the Motorola one, it's a traditional Motorola finish really, just a nice plain design, nice and simple and straightforward. And as you can see there, you once again get a rear mounted fingerprint sensor with a nice bit of the Motorola branding in there too. Both phones are basically splash resistant, you don't get full water resistance. In the case of the Motorola one, it's actually P2I rated as well, so pretty good for those rather hefty thunderstorms. Both of these phones serve up a 3.5mm headphone jack as well for your wired headphone connections. In the case of the Motorola One, it's actually up top, whereas in the Honor Play, it's down below. And thankfully, they both use a bit of Type-C USB for charging as well. And checking out those screens, as mentioned before, the Motorola One, it's a slightly smaller display, 5.9 inches compared with the 6.3 inch on a player, but in either case, are you going to be squinting to see what's going on if you're watching a nice bit of Netflix? In both cases, is an IPS screen, but they actually have quite punchy colour output as well, as you can see here. If we stick them side by side, they certainly do those colours uh, lots of justice. The more vibrant hues really shine through. And in both the Motorola One and the Honor Play, it's fully customisable as well. Just dive into the display settings and you'll find you'll be able to tinker about with them. As you can see, they're both in a kind of vibrant or vivid mode to begin with, but you can dial that back if you don't want those colours to pop quite so much. And of course you get the usual eye comfort mode or night light in the case of the Motorola One and the usual adaptive brightness and everything too. Now the Honor Play does actually boast crisper visuals than the Motorola One. It's a full HD plus panel which means 2340 by 1080. In the case of the Motorola One it's just HD plus which is 1520 by 720. All the same, watching a bit of Netflix or something like that side by side, you don't really notice much difference. Certainly in some of those high res movies you'll notice a little bit more detail here and there on the Honor Play, but honestly the Motorola One is perfectly fine for enjoying a bit of telly or a flick on the go. So in terms of the software I've already mentioned that the Motorola One is an Android One smartphone, which basically means a nice clean vanilla version of Google's OS. As a consequence there's very few bonus features on there from Motorola itself, just a couple buried away inside the um, Moto app. We're literally talking about a double karate chop to turn on the rear flashlight and a quick twist uh, to turn on the camera app as well as the standard motor display functionality. One bonus to that however is the fact that you'll get the latest Android security updates pretty much as they happen and Motorola is also guaranteed that we'll get two big Android updates in the future. So we'll get an update to Android Pie, presumably in the next sort of couple of weeks after Google's Pixel 3 launches, and then an update again to Android Q, whatever that may be. In the case of the Honor Play, Android Oreo has been updated with a nice bit of Emotion UI 8.2. That adds a bunch of bonus Huawei features on top of Android. So we've already mentioned that one-handed mode, which is pretty damn useful. You also get plenty of other gesture support and stuff in there as well, kind of similar 
to the Motorola One. One of the other big things, however, is facial recognition, which has been added in to supplement that rear-mounted fingerprint sensor. And this just allows you to just tap the power button and immediately it'll scan your face and take you straight into your desktop. So you can have it to uh, swipe to access it if you want it that way as well. And it works really well, even in low light situations, generally very, very effective. Here on the Motorola One, you don't have a dedicated bit of support for facial recognition. All you've got instead is good old smart lock. So you do get a bit of trusted face on there, but frankly, it's a wee bit pants. You can't have it immediately unlocked to your desktops and we found it's really, really shonky. Even in pretty good conditions, you're generally sort of waving it around trying to get it to recognize you. And according to security boffins, it's also reasonably easy to flummox. So uh, personally, we wouldn't recommend it. As mentioned before, the honor plate is all about gaming as well. So for instance, you get the game suite app that just basically adds as a hub. One interesting feature this adds is the uninterrupted gaming effort. And what that basically does is just blocks any notifications while you're getting your game on to uh, prevent you from being disrupted. You also have a bit of 4D smart shock as well, which acts as a sort of a rumble effect whenever you're getting your game on. It's quite a subtle feature, kind of similar to the rumble on a uh, PlayStation controller. It's not exactly a game changer, but it's nice to have. In terms of the performance though, the Honor Play absolutely smashes it out of the park. If you load up a bit of Geekbench, you'll see in a side-by-side -side comparison, no contest. The Honor Play proves much more capable for both the single core and the multi-core tests. That said, the Motorola One with its Snapdragon 625 chipset performs absolutely fine so far. Uh, definitely had no struggles or anything like that. Apps seem to load up basically instantly as soon as you tap them, so that's lovely. I'll be fully testing it out with PUBG and uh, games like that as well, so stay tuned for my in-depth Motorola One review to see exactly how it copes with all of that. The Honor Play with its Kirin 970 chipset, again backed by either 4 or 6 gigs of RAM, depending on which model you grab. Uh, the latest games are just PUBG play absolutely perfectly on strong detail levels as well. Helped along by that GPU turbo feature of Huawei's, which just helps to keep the frame rate nice and consistent. If you're all about the battery life, again, the Honor Play really impresses in that area. It's got a massive 3,750 milliamp cell, so it'll easily keep you going for a full day, even with lots of intensive use. And if you're gonna mix it up a bit, you can generally expect between a day and a half and two days of life. And the Motorola One, it's still got a pretty sizable 3,000 milliamp cell. We haven't managed to do full testing on it yet, but so far seems to be holding up quite nicely, even with a fair bit of screen time on, that uh, battery level is barely ticking down. As you see, you've got your usual selection of battery saving modes on both of these handsets. In the case of the Honor Play, you've got the ultra power saving mode if you're really struggling. And both phones support a form of fast charging as well. Things are a bit more even when it comes to the storage. You get a base 64 gigs of uh, space on both of these handsets. And both phones can be expanded in a Jeffy using a micro SD as well. 256 gigabyte card supported. So what about the camera tech? Well, as you see, the Motorola One and the Honor Play both use a dual lens rear snapper. Don't get too excited though. There's no particularly snazzy features here. Those secondary lenses are basically just depth sensors in order to get a real uh, depth of field for that portrait mode. The Motorola One's primary lens is a 30 megapixel effort with an f2.0 aperture, whereas over here on the Honor Play it's a 16 megapixel with f2.2. Fit them to the front and you once again get slightly more impressive specs here on the Honor Play. It's a 16 megapixel f2.0 aperture selfie cam compared with the 8 megapixel f2.2 here on the Motorola One. If we jump on into the camera apps, you'll see that they both offer very different feature sets as well. Of course, in both cases, you've got an auto mode, although the Honor Play actually boasts Huawei's AI mode. What this is, is basically just a, a form of advanced scene selection. It can really help to boost colors in a scene and really bring a shot to life. Very impressive stuff. Both these phones sport a form of move and picture or active photos mode that just shoots a brief video snippet with every photo, bringing your photo gallery to life when you're flipping through it. And both the Honor Play and the Motorola One also sport a form of manual mode as well, so you get full professional controls if you know what you're doing. The Motorola One has a few little bonus features as well. You do, of course, get that portrait mode, as you do here on the Honor Play, which just allows you to shoot a nice crisp uh, shot of your subject with a nice blurry bokeh background effect to help them really stand out. You've also got the spot color feature as well, which just isolates a particular color and then makes everything else monochrome. So for instance, if we just tap this little jobby here, so you can see there, everything that isn't blue then becomes perfectly black and white. That's pretty much it for the photo features here on the Motorola One. In the case of the Honor Play, you get AR lens, so you can create funny little pictures of penguins fishing in your living room if that's your bag. I guess good if you've got small children or you're just a bit weird. And if you dive on into the more section, there is plenty more stuff tucked away there, although nothing in particular note beyond the likes of the Pro Mode. In terms of the video bonus features as well, you get slow motion time-lapse and the ability to stream live to YouTube here on the Motorola One. 
And here, of course, on the underplay, you once again get the likes of the slow-mo and that time-lapse. As for the standard video, well, that's pretty straightforward in both cases. Image stabilization leaves a lot to be desired, unfortunately, but at least you've got the option of shooting up to 4K resolution video. And both these phones also support Full HD at either 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. And that right there in a nutshell is the Motorola One versus the Honor Play. As you can see, they support some pretty decent specs and a solid amount of features for a rather low asking price. The Honor Play does have the benefit when it comes to the performance, that larger battery as well, and of course the fact that it is absolutely rammed full of bonus features such as that handy one-handed mode. In the case of the Motorola One, it's not quite as impressive when it comes to the specs or the feature sets, but the fact that it's Android One means that it will get those security updates and other Android updates in a very timely fashion. And if you prefer the more vanilla Android experience, then this is obviously the one to go for. So which one do you personally prefer? Definitely be interested to hear your thoughts. Let us know in the comments down below. And don't forget to hit subscribe for more on the Motorola One, the Honor Play, and all of the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers, guys. Love you.